views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the staff and management of WWDB-TV. Hello, welcome to Let's Talk Sports with Rick and Jack. I'm Rick. It's my buddy Jack. How you doing, sir? Welcome. Good. I'm awesome. I'm doing very well. It's uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody, by the way. It's uh, that time of year again, and we have, though it's been a tough year, we have a lot to be thankful for. I know Jack and I have a lot to be thankful for. We're thankful for this great audience that we have and for you coming back and watching us every week and getting involved in our sports talk show and also our football, NFL football show. So we, we thank you for your viewership. We thank you for liking what we do. We thank you for following. We thank you for subscribing. Uh, stay with us here at WWDB TV. We enjoy having you as our audience. And again, uh, we're always looking for comments and uh, anybody that has uh, some input that they want to give us. Um, on this week's sports show, I'm curious, what stood out for you in the last week in sports? What, uh, what's that standout moment? Um, for me, it's not even what happened last week. It's what's about to happen this week with, um, with boxing. There's supposed to be an exhibition match with, oh, uh, yes, you're right. with Mike Tyson. And all of a sudden, like, I'm hyped for it. I see his training videos. I'm like, Roy Jones is going to die, you know. And now I won't even get to see a knockout, much less a death. Like, what are they doing? And if anybody What's gets... What's the cost of this thing, by the way? I, I'm not... I don't even know now. It's a pay-per-view event, It's a pay-per-view event, right? pay event. No way. To over the hill. I, for me personally, I don't know about the audience. I mean, hey, they were two amazing boxers. Doing their, uh, in their prime? Amazing gotcha. careers in their prime, both of them. And kudos to both. But I am not interested in seeing, hey, we can all get in shape. We all work out and get in shape. He and I could probably have a boxing match. I mean, I would get my, you know what, kicked. But, I mean, I'm, yeah, you know, I'm a little guy. He's a big guy, and I'm slow, and he's fast. Um, and I don't want these good looks to be injured anyways, hurt, or, you know, my nose, this Italian nose broken. But uh, I'm not interested in that. No. I, I have no interest. So, and moving on, I have to tell you, my wow moment that I call it, and, and I was, um, Surprised to see this. Last night I was watching MLS soccer, uh, a quarterfinal match between Seattle Sounders and the uh, Los Angeles Soccer Club. The, it was a quarterfinal match. Uh, who's going to be going to the semifinals and eventually the finals of the MLS? And in watching that, I, I, in paying attention, the broadcaster, the sportscaster said that Seattle had made the playoffs 13 straight years. This was their 13th straight year of making the playoffs. And I was like, wow, that's a dynasty that I didn't even know about. You know, and being an average soccer fan and not paying that much attention, for a team in any sport to make the playoffs 13 straight years as Seattle has done. And by the way, they beat Los Angeles last night. They won 3-1. to one. And I, was, I, I enjoyed the match, but as I watched it and they were talking about Seattle and the success they had had, 13 straight years in the playoffs. That's what struck me this week. It's like, wow. And of course, the other thing, I got to give you one more. The devastation of Clay Thompson tearing his right Achilles. That was just horrible devastation. As, as a sports fan, as a guy who played sports, it, it hurt me internally to see a guy that works so hard, that loves the game so much, that would probably play for free. He loves it so much. He is a lover. He's a true credit to yes. the NBA. Yes, he is. Clay Thompson, we love you. Uh, you're a Southern California guy. You've had a great career. You're going to do. You're going to do more. You're going to do better. You're going to get healthy. Hang in there. Another year of rehabbing after you've had a year of rehabbing. We love you. We're sorry for what happened, but that really, that really touched me, to my soul because, that's an athlete's life. Life. Life is playing ball. And I think you know, with that injury, not only did it change. I think it changed, the, um, the team. You know, would they have kept that draft, that draft pick at number two, yeah. if that didn't happen, or you know, would it, would the landscape be different in on other teams? So it's yeah. like it's, you know, it's unfortunate, you know, and it's like we never know what it, what effect he would have had this year, especially the fact that 
the Splash Brothers were coming to coming back together. They yeah, were, they had, they were on a mission. They oh. they they mission driven, and you know they want to show the Lakers and the rest of the league that they're that they were worthwhile. And I mean, they it happened the day, the morning of the draft, and 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 they just decided Golden State just decided to keep the draft pick. They got James Wiseman, who is a young guy. He's got a long way to go. He's tall. He's seven one. He's got length. He's a good ball player. He's talented. He's talented, but that talent takes a little while. You saw with Tyler Hero for Miami. By the end of the year, he came around. During the year, he wasn't even doing much. I mean, you hardly heard his name. I didn't know much about this kid, Hero, from Miami. Look at look how he played in the bubble and how he came to life. So these kids, it takes them a good year. So Wiseman will help them. But, you know, I, I, I don't know what Golden State is going to do. I, I think that they're still reeling. And as you know, free agency in the draft, that West is loaded. I mean, the Lakers probably had the number one off-season, free agency. Uh, I beg to, I want to say. The Lakers had a good off-season. No, yes, they did. We, yes, they did. We I, say off-season, my God, we're going to be playing again on the 22nd in, of December. In less than a month. Yeah. Um, the Lakers did well Yes. in free agency. They did well, but I, I, I wouldn't, like, put a, I wouldn't say they did the best because you had, if you're going to grade them, yes, they got an A on as far as, uh, what they did, but then you also have other teams like, say, even the Blazers. The quiet, uh, the they Blazers quietly had a good just draft. did their thing and signed play, brought brought Cantor back, brought um, signed Anthony, signed yeah. Hood. Um, they so signed those, Covington, Covington out of Houston, who's a great shooter. So those things that they did um, made him. They got an a great as far as being upgraded from where they're at. Whereas I look at the, at the Clippers and it's like, oh, the best you could do is get um, Serge. Yeah, they got Serge Ibaka, and they lost their enforcer. I, I, I mean, you know, Trez Harrell went to the Lakers. That, that's a big, how do, how that's a big get, move for the Lakers. How do they get, like, damn near two six-man of the year Yeah, on, the, on their squad? Yeah, and then they get Gasol. So they get, they get rid of Howard. Howard leaves. He ends up, you know, going off and, you know, playing for another couple of years someplace else. He stays in the league. And, and then you lose McGee. They traded McGee. And you end up with Trez Harrell and Gasol. I mean, that's they did well. That's a big upgrade. And then you bring in Wesley Matthews, who's a is a great shooter. I mean, and and then and then you bring in Schroeder, who from a OKC, who's a facilitator. They lost Rondo. Rondo leaves and goes to Atlanta, and that's fine, because Schroeder is a young Rondo who's going to be the facilitator. So. You know, I think I really think the Lakers are better this year. Are going to be better this year and lose less games than they it's were on, last well, year. It's on paper. Let's let's see them on the court. You watch. Like, hey, you watch those Lakers. They they stay healthy. They worry. It's great to Portland. They got Nurkic back. They got Lillard back. I mean, and they picked up you know Cantor, you know Covington. They got McCollum back. They they picked up Rodney Hood came back. Okay, so they're okay. So okay, can they even beat Denver? Can Portland beat Denver? Can Portland beat Utah? The West is loaded, man. The West, yes, the West. And Houston, there's the nothing but trouble there. Um, Houston, Houston <laughs> is like Houston. We have a problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, the, what but they've been imploding since uh, since they they got knocked out of playoffs. It's like a uh, implosion there. This it's the from owner on all the way down. It's just what a um, mess. there's no direction. There's there's trouble in Houston, yeah. but let's not talk. Let's let's talk about all the, the other teams that that did well. And what do you think as far as other teams that you give an A, A plus, maybe even I, a I B? I think the Hawks did very well. Uh, there's a team that really upgraded. They brought in Rondo. They brought in Bogdanovich from Sacramento. They signed him, and it was uh, Sacramento didn't match it. The, Sacramento had a chance to match what was offered. They didn't match it. Bogdanovich leaves. They got the kid from USC, that center, who's just, another, again, a rookie, but a talented young man from Nigeria, talented young man. Gallinari comes in, great pure shooter. They still have Trey Young. Atlanta improved a lot. Yes. And like you said, Portland improved a lot. They, and the other one was Phoenix. Yes, that uh, with Chris Ball and uh, Devin Booker over there, that's, yeah. that should be. And Crowder, they, they signed Crowder, who, you know, had a really good playoff. So, I mean, you got a good team. They got, you know, Aiden. Um, at center, the kid from Arizona, he's been there a couple years now. He's going to be a lot better. Chris Paul is a great facilitator. So Not to mention he plays smart, smart, smart. Well, he's going to help. He's going to help Booker. 
And, and, and Booker doesn't need much help, by the way. I mean, but he's gonna no, but he's gonna facilitate. He's gonna handle the ball. Those um, w helping him develop a better basketball IQ, you know, is gonna benefit him years to come. And you can't you can't put a price on that. No, no, I, I agree with you. And, and another team that did, you know, some of the teams re-signed their guys. Um, Van Fleet re-signing in, in in Toronto is a very big lucrative thing. contract. Yes, so yeah. did um, the guy our in uh, Bama Mike. Bio. Yes, I didn't want to cuss so. Yeah, bam. <laughs> Thanks. I buy you. <laughs> Thanks for being I mean, on that that's one. That's huge. He he's an yeah. all star. And, yes. and then you know Tatum, he got the max contract in Boston. Yeah, he was the best player on the team. So yeah. why not um, pay him as such? Yeah. So I mean, there's a lot of movement in the NBA. As I look at this list of guys that have moved around, I mean, it's it, it's going to be prolific. What's going to happen with the Bucks? Is Giannis going to resign, or is he going to that contract going to? Be run out and he's going to go play for somebody else. They say that, you know, he's going to go. I don't know where he's going to go. The you Lakers know, are talking about I, I look, What do you think about him? Is I he just, going to resign? Um, I think he's not. I, um, one thing with a good basketball player, no matter how much money they get paid, they want to win. And if, you know, you, Absolutely. Cannot, you, you cannot go down at the best at any position and you don't have that ring that, that, that comes along with it. So I think he, he might, and I, I don't know what the Lakers did, but I looked at their roster today. I saw um, his, his uh, brother on the, uh, on the team. Yeah. So, you know, maybe that's a, a way to lower him there. Hey, you know, kind of like. The Lakers are loaded. And I keep going back to him, I'm amazed. Marquise Morris resigned with them. KPC, Catavius Caldwell Pope resigned. They brought in two great centers. They brought in Matthews. You talk about losing players. Look at Milwaukee. They lost Matthews, mm -hmm. Robin Lopez, and George Hill. They did not Those get better. Those are three good ball players. What have they done to replace them? They, they did not they, get better. Um, and that's, they did not get better. And that's one of the, the things that, that the Greek freak wants. It's like, how do we get better? Like, um, at times, teams are going to find a way to shut him down. So who... Uh, who does he depend on? He has the one to depend on right now. Yeah, and, and I don't really think he's going to sign. I, I think he's going to play out this contract, and what they're probably going to end up doing is trying to trade him because they know they're going to lose him. Hey, you, when you're an unrestricted free agent, you get nothing for him. Goodbye. I mean, and they, they lost. I mean, what message are they sending there? They lost three great ball players. And didn't get anything for him. Well, yeah, they, they got Giannis and Milton. Okay, two all-stars. Milton is non-present half of the time, but, you know, in the end, this has been a lot, a lot of movement. I mean, it's been great, but I, I think that the Lakers in Portland and Phoenix and Atlanta really did well. W what did Boston do? Boston lost Horford and uh, Hayward. Uh, Hayward went to Charlotte. Charlotte's improved their team. Uh, and they got LaMelo Ball. They get the dad with it. You know, you get LaMelo Ball, you get his father with him. So, you know, that's all oh, yeah. interesting. But oh, yeah. Charlotte he, improved themselves. But, but the biggest improvement, I think, is the Lakers. The yeah. number one team. Yeah. Hey, Rob Palenka. <laughs> Rob Palenka, beautiful. It's one of those. I know you're that, not a that, Laker that, lover like me. I, I know. I do like the Lakers. Um, but it's, it's one of those situations where it's the haves and the have-nots and the haves keep having and the uh, – the knots <laughs> keep on out. Because I'm going to say, what did the Knicks do? <laughs> hey, Knicks, Brooklyn. Brooklyn's got two superstars. Are they going to stay healthy? Uh, I, I mean, you know, uh, teams went out and improved themselves. And, and they want to compete with the Lakers. What did Philadelphia do to improve themselves? They got a new coach. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, really? Uh, I mean... The, the problem with the teams that all improve themselves are in the West. The, the problem with, with Philadelphia, they don't, they need, the coach needs time to assist, assess the situation there. And, you know, being in the league is not like he's a brand new coach with Doc Rivers going there. It's, he should know Doc Rivers. What, what he needs, but they didn't want to make any moves. It's like you, you have to make, uh, you, they're falling in love with players rather than falling in love with, bringing a championship uh, that's, <laughs> the Lakers got a whole bunch of players but you know you look at across town the Clippers what did they really do nothing they lost some good ball players Harrell was a leader um they're talking about shopping Paul George now because they didn't like what happened at the um at the end of the season there with him and how he had a, a mental situation um they're, they're talking about shopping Beverly 
They're talking and talking about shopping Lou Williams. But you know who they said is the greatest value to shop? Zubats, that young kid, the center. They're getting more offers for him than anybody. Yeah, because and, and they don't want to move him. Well, who are they going to have a center? Who's going to play center for him then? No. If Zubats is gone. You, and he's not a premier NBA player. He has potential, but, you know, potential only gets you so far, and then it's on paper right now. Yeah, but yeah. We can we can stay here and talk about this for the next. Well, we could talk week, NBA all day today. All day I, long. If you want, if you've got another two hours, we'll talk NBA. But we're going to move on. We're going to take a break, and uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about what's going on in college football and yes. the, the rankings came out in the, the playoff position, and that was kind of interesting. But uh, we'll be right back at you. We're going to take a commercial break. Stay tuned, and we're going to talk college football. Thank you for watching. Bob Allen Golf has a full tour shop for all of your repairs, including regripping, reshafting, loft and lie adjustments, whatever you need. Bob has the only full swing simulator in Las Vegas. Get your next set of golf clubs custom fit right here at Bob Allen Golf, located at 6415 South Fort Apache, Las Vegas, 89148. With Bob Allen Golf, your game is in the bag. Welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us through the commercial break. We appreciate that. Uh, as we had a lively conversation about what's going on in the NBA, the, the draft was, you know, fun and it was exciting. Not many, not many things that surprised anybody in the draft, but uh, we're done with that. And free agency is just the action of free agency is crazy in the NBA. But we're going to talk. What do you think about what happened in the college playoff situation? The first vote of the week. College playoffs, four teams. Um, what do you think? G give me an overall synopsis of what you think of uh, the, the rankings. So two things. One is um, Ohio State um, being behind Clemson. But Undefeated Ohio State that done nothing wrong. Yeah, but they're, they're playing like they, they should. They almost got beat by Indiana, though. But they're, they're playing ball. Um, and then you have you have an 8-0 Cincinnati and a 9-0 BYU. Yeah. And... Cincinnati, they put them at number seven, whereas BYU at number 14. You talk about no love, and who got, like, literally zero love was the Pac-12. Oh, no, no, Oregon, wow. And Oregon's going to beat up on Oregon State this week because they are a mad football team. There was no love for the Pac-12, Oregon or U USC. They're both, you know, rated in, in the normal ratings, but uh, no love for Oregon or USC. I think, uh, what, Oregon was 11 or... Yeah, and USC was, gee, I think they were 17 uh, in the in the you know playoff rankings. But you know, I I, I mean, Alabama number one, of course. Of course. Notre Dame know. number two, of course. Clemson, I don't know. Is Lawrence that big of a difference? Is Clemson really three? Is Ohio State really four? Uh, I think you got to. I think you really got to look out. I I think things are going to change because of the playoffs. Notre Dame is going to have to play Clemson in the championship of the ACC. So that's going to make a difference. Alabama is going to have to play a very good Florida team. Let's face it, Florida to me looks like the best team in college football. I really like the way Florida's playing. I mean, that, that kid Trask, a quarterback, as far as I'm concerned, he's a Heisman Trophy winner at this point of the season. Things may change. I don't Ooh, know if you've watched Florida. already hey. jinx on them. Come hey. on, stop crying. Florida, Florida. Watch them. They'll give Alabama all they want. But I, I'll stick with what I've said from the start. I think Notre Dame is the number one team in the country, in my opinion, and they will prove it. They, they're the toughest team out there. They play great offense, great defense, and great special teams, and they're tougher than everybody else. But they, the last time they, play, they played Clemson, Lawrence was not playing. So, and I think that would have, been, that would have made a big difference. So let's see, let's, let's see that at the championship game. Let, let's see how it, it um, turns out. I thought that kid played pretty good for Clemson. He did. DJ, uh, he was very good for a freshman out of, you know, he, Southern California. And that's what I'm saying. They, uh, they I mean, he didn't have freshman them. jitters. You yes. think Notre Dame should have annihilated, annihilated him, a, a top quarterback? No. But, I mean, well, well, I thought Clemson, they, they, there wasn't anybody missing on defense, was there? They couldn't stop Notre Dame. Notre Dame's a good football team. Clemson, listen, they got a great coach. Dabo Sweeney finds a way. You know, um, Saban finds a way. I just think that 
Notre Dame is the best team. And, and you're right, BYU and Cincinnati, let's have them play each other and maybe drop them into the top four. And neither one of them is going to make it to the top four. No. I believe, I believe in that group there. Not when you have Texas A&M sitting outside um, asking why. Yeah, there's only two teams. As far as I'm concerned in college football, there's only two teams that can break into that top four right now. Florida and, 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 and Northwestern. Tech. Oh, Northwestern. Wow. Yeah. Florida and Northwestern are the only two teams that I believe can break into that top four. Northwestern is capable of beating Ohio State, and Northwestern may be the best team in the league. We know Michigan and Michigan State aren't. Uh, uh, what's up with Harbaugh? He going to stick around? He going to go be an assistant to his brother in Baltimore? His brother isn't doing nothing in Baltimore. They're both having a bad year. Well, maybe he'll... The uh, Harbaugh bros. <laughs> Maybe he'll uh, take over, stay right there in state and go to um, take over the, the Lions. Yeah. Well, the Lions, you know, they're not doing much. We'll talk about that on our NFL show. But The one time I, I picked them, they, they disappointed. I know. I mean, and they had that good win the week before and were bad last week. Mm -hmm. So tell me, tell me, tell me, your, give me your top six, your top six in college football. Who's got a shot at the, the big dance for the, you know, the final four? Well, you have the four. The, the big games that make you, where you make all the money and you got the best shot and the fans want to watch and there's always a controversy. But, uh, I mean, Cincinnati and BYU, unless something drastic happens, are, they may have a good bowl game together. They're on the outside looking in. USC, Oregon. And USC is not that good. Uh, by the way, I apologize to all USC fans. Uh, uh, I said that they were lucky to beat the two Arizona schools, and they were. But they uh, put a licking on Utah. But, of course, it was Utah's first game because of all the COVID restrictions that happened over there and the problems. But USC looked good this week. Uh, they're going to play Colorado coming up, and I think they'll do well. SC is improving, but they're not going to be there. Oregon's not going to be there. Uh, but, but you have to also understand it's, they've only played three games. So um, body of work is still not there. Still improving. Still improving to, to be proven to even crack it. But I, th I think Cincinnati at, at 8 or no, um, keep on pushing. And you never know th what these teams beating up on themselves. Or you might have a situation where, with like Lawrence, where he didn't show up. You don't know up. what happens. You, you never know. But th and this is the first one. And, and I, I, first I, week out on the rankings. And I They're think not when they change do these much. rankings, it, they try to do matchups at the same time. R rather than... <laughs> If, if this happened, that happened, or rather than just picking the, the four best teams. Well, let me ask you a question. When you talk about just picking the four best teams, which they are, I think there's really only five teams that have a shot at being in the final, final four. But let me ask you this question. If BYU played Cincinnati, who would win? And I'm not done yet. And if USC played Oregon, who would win? Now... USC and Oregon are going to play in the Pac-12 championship, it looks like. But who, who in those two games would win? I, they, they could move up. They could move up and, and be impressive. I'll take, I'll take uh, Cincinnati. Over BYU. Yeah. I agree with you. I believe Cincinnati is a legitimate team. I don't believe BYU is a good team. They're a good team for who they've played. They, the only good team they've beaten is Boise State, and Boise State was not at full strength because their quarterback was out. Again, a situation where the quarterback was out. He came back the next week and Bo Boise State rolled. I don't, don't get me wrong, they're well coached. The guy's a great coach, great leader at BYU. They are not top five quality, in my opinion. Cincinnati is not top five quality. Oregon is not top five quality. SC is not top five quality. Right now, based on I believe three Florida and Northwestern are the only teams that are capable of playing with those other four teams in the top four. But it's only three games, and they're only limited to play in their who, who conference. Who are you talking about three games? Oregon and SC? Yes. Okay. They can play 12, and they're still not that good. But they're limited to their... And Oregon's well coached, by the way. SC is not well coached. They got all the talent. SC's, SC's loaded on offense. Have you watched SC's receivers? Yes. My God, they're loaded. But give me, give, give me your top five. I would go... Alabama, Notre Dame, uh, Clemson. Actually, I'll put um, Ohio State, then Clemson. Um, and then that last one, <sighs> Texas A&M. Texas A&M, yeah, they haven't been able to play the poor guys. Uh, they were on a roll. But tell me why they put Georgia up there, high in the rankings, and they have two losses already. Georgia's not a great football team. They've got two losses. 
But they're, 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 they're up get, there. They're, they're considering strength of schedule and all that stuff. Um, but their strength of schedule, some of those teams that they, well, you're supposed to win games that you're supposed to win, and they were not winning games. That were, those two losses, they should have won those games. So is JT Daniels going to make a difference for them? I mean, he played great. I mean, that's a kid that was U at USC and, and, and lost the job to Slovis. And um, so he left and went to Georgia, and, and he was rehabbing that knee. He looked pretty good last week. So it was maybe uh, Daniels is the answer for Georgia. I don't, I don't think Georgia is a great football team. Well, give again, me your top five. I get. I said uh, you I'll, needed one more in there. No, I, that's where that's where my uh, that's where Texas A&M comes in. Texas A&M is your fifth. Yeah, because okay. I I think those two those two weeks that they were not able to play, but I once they start um, once they play again, I really think you you'll see you'll see a difference. Okay. You'll see why 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 they should be in my top five. Um, it's just they haven't been able to play the last two weeks because of okay. COVID. COVID. I, that's a good five I, for me. From aesthetics, from the look, you know, the eye test, of course, Alabama looks number one, but I'm going to put Notre Dame number one. I'm going to put Alabama number two. I'm going to put Clemson number three. Over Ohio State? Yes. I'm going to put Ohio State number four. I'm going to put Florida number five, and I'm going to put Northwestern number six. And when Northwestern beats Ohio State, they may move into the top four. Hmm. Watch out for that Northwestern team. He, he said it first, Northwestern. Those are my two teams at Florida and Northwestern. One of those guys is going to jump into the top four. You know, I'd, I'd hate to see it. I'd hate to see it. Do you know they were saying on the show last night, on that championship show, which I like to watch and, you know, the rating in their prognostication, they were saying that the team, the last five years, it was number one. The last five years has made it to the championship game. In the first week, like Alabama's number one, that team for the last five years, the first week voted in in the championship series, they made it to the finals. And every time they lost. Really interesting. The first week, number one in the championship series voting, five years in a row, and they lost in the championship wow, game. Wow, that's, 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 that's an amazing good, that's stat, right? That's stats, yeah. So, yeah, five years in a row. So you the team me. voted number one the first week, Made it to the championship and lost. So I should go to, um, I should make, go put a bet on uh, Notre Dame right now? Put your money on Notre Dame to win it all. I, I may be crazy. Brian Kelly, he may not be as good as a coach as some of these other guys, but, you know, it's fun. I mean, it's the first week, like you say. And, but with this pandemic and these games being canceled, I don't think much is going to change. I, I think that it's only going to change when you have the championship games, which aren't that far away. Like, what is it, like three weeks away yeah. uh, till we have the, the, the league championships? You know, Ohio State playing Northwestern, that's big. So do you Alabama playing Florida, that's big. Notre Dame playing Clemson, that changes that whole mix. Those three games change that whole top four mix. So... Um, Maybe. <laughs> do you think that they're going to do a bubble style um, for when it comes to, like, the championship run? So then that way, are they just going to let, hey, man, if you, you, you made the playoffs, you need to take all the precautions you, you need to be taking because otherwise we're not canceling these games. You're just going to have the backup of the backup playing? Interesting question. I, I, I mean, for me. Are you going to – or is the, the NCAA – going to protect themselves with their ratings and sponsors and all of that. Um, because if Trevor Lawrence is not playing in a championship game, just because uh, it's Clemson, the ratings are going to still be there? Well, I mean, everybody in the end wants to see Alabama and Clemson play each other again. Um, I want to see, no, I want to see, no, I want to see Notre Dame play Florida. So I, I, I like to shake it up. I'm tired of watching the same teams every year. Clemson, Alabama, Clemson, Alabama, Clemson, Alabama. I, I don't want to see it. Georgia was in there one year. So then go switch to eight teams. Well, that's a, that's a subject for another day. All right. But first week, it's, it's interesting. Uh, you know, this pandemic is hurting a lot of it. And I just, let's see what happens next week. And uh, thanks a lot for being on the show today. Oh, thank you. My awesome co-host, Mr. Jack. 
he don't know Jack, I don't know, we, we just try hard, but this has been a great show, it's been very lively, we've talked primarily about basketball, NBA, and the uh, college group of football, and we're going to move on to our uh, NFL show, and we're going to do that today, please watch it, please watch us, thanks for joining in, this has been a lively show, let us know what your picks are, let us know what you think of the NBA um, free agency and the draft, how it went in your mind, and what teams did well and what teams failed in the NBA, let us know where uh, who your top four are, top five. I like to put five, six in there. Who are your top teams in college football right now, and who do you think is going to be in the championship series? Continue to watch us. Like our shows. Please view them. Um, everybody has their own opinions. That's what's great about sports. We'd like to hear your opinion. We appreciate you watching, joining in every week. Again, join us at WWDB-TV and on YouTube. You can see us on YouTube. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Happy Thanksgiving. God bless. The best to you and your families. Thank you, my friend. Happy Thanksgiving. And thank you all. Happy Thanksgiving. God bless.